Positive Spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from around the world. On today's program, we'll hear an interview with author Kimberly Weichel concerning her new book, Beyond Borders, One Woman's Journey of Courage, Passion, and Inspiration. And then we'll learn about Michelle Holliday's dramatic life journey from having a successful career to being homeless on the streets to her present life in a beautiful home in California. Finally, we'll visit Comic-Con in Palm Springs, where young superheroes will express their views about the need for peace in our world. Hello, my name is Bill McCarthy. I'm the host of Positive Spin. And I'm Brenda Lynn Martin, the correspondent for Positive Spin TV. And we want to welcome you to this month's Positive Spin television program. In our first segment, we present an interview with author Kimberly Weichel concerning her new book entitled Beyond Borders, One Woman's Journey of Courage, Passion, and Inspiration. In the interview, we'll learn about Kimberly's amazing life as a teacher, NGO administrator, radio and television producer, and lifelong peace activist. That sounds like a fantastic segment. I can't wait for you all to watch it. Kim, it's so exciting you've written Beyond Borders. Why did you write the book, and what are some of the themes that you've covered in the book? I've been very fortunate to have some remarkable experiences during some really interesting times in history. So some years ago, some friends suggested that I write about these experiences. So I started writing, and I never stopped. And it really has become a journey of self-exploration, where I looked at the key influences in my life. Who influenced me? What called me and why? What did I do and why? And most importantly, what did I learn that I can share with others? And I've realized through this journey that we each have a tremendous amount of wisdom to share. And then I'm hoping that this book will inspire others to share their stories that we can learn from each other. So there are several themes in the book. At a young age, I witnessed a variety of horrors from violence, from war, from injustice in Germany, in South Africa, in Russia. And I really wanted to do something myself and decided if I built understanding that that could be a basic building block of building peace. And that was, is a thrust throughout many of the stories. And I chronicle those years and, and what I did and why I did them. Uh, another theme is about being a global citizen, where we each are living in this globalized world. We have so much to learn from each other that our similarities are always far greater than our differences. And I think it's important to reach out beyond differences, to reach beyond divides and beyond borders, which is why I called it that, to uh, listen and explore and learn from each other. And I guess another theme is about going for it, about taking risks, about trying things, about going beyond our comfort zone, because that's where the learning is. For me, that's where the juice was. And to have the courage uh, to step through our fears out of our comfort zone and to try new things. So those are a few of the themes in the book. Kim, would you share a few of the stories that readers might find of interest? I'd be happy to. Several stories. One was about the extraordinary time of living and working in Cape Town, South Africa in the 1980s during the height of apartheid. Obviously a very difficult time to live there, and the only way I could live there during those five years that my husband and I lived there was to get involved in doing what I could to help build a post-apartheid society. So while simultaneously going to the University of Cape Town, finishing my degree and doing my master's there, I was regional director of an organization that really worked to build reconciliation during those years. We worked with employers about how to reduce discriminatory policies in the workplace. We led cross-cultural dialogues to build understanding and worked with them on how to develop more integrated workplaces. We worked with embassies in getting realistic information about living and working conditions out to other countries to build a constituency to put pressure on the apartheid government. And we worked with a large squatter community on the outskirts of Cape Town called Crossroads that housed 20,000 people that the government wanted to bulldoze. And we worked as a team of lawyers and community activists and journalists to stave off demolition, to ensure that the Africans living there had a place to live, even though a very uh, 
crowded squatter community. And I'm happy to say we were successful and in fact Crossroads still remains today. A second story was another remarkable time in history where I was very involved with the former Soviet Union over a 10 year period from 1986 to 1996, again during the height of the Cold War at the initial years. And I got involved with an organization that was a pioneer in terms of citizen diplomacy with the former Soviet Union. So the Center for Citizen Initiative started taking groups of ordinary Americans over to the former Soviet Union in the 1980s, meeting with Russians, realizing that again, our similarities were far greater than our differences. And we talked about our lives and our dreams for the future and our families, and we realized we didn't have to fear them like they didn't have to fear us, that we wanted to do whatever we could because of our collective concern with the nuclear buildup and the concern for another world war. So I led four citizen diplomacy trips there. That evolved then into offering skills like economic development programs that help jumpstart the Russian economy and many other programs which I chronicle in this chapter. And the third story is another uh, very interesting one that is an unknown part of our American history. And that's about the great law of peace. There were six Iroquois nations in northeastern the United States in the mid 1500s that were in war and a person in the name of the peacemaker uh, traveled throughout the region, brought peace to the Iroquois nations and developed something called the great law of peace, which is their uh, constitution and a way of being. So he devised a system where women were the clan mothers that had an equal balance of power with the chiefs who were men. And uh, it became a, a really influential part of the, for the founding fathers and our US Constitution, as well as a model for the United Nations. And the role of the clan mothers in Iroquois society was, uh, was foundational for the founding of the women's movement. So I write about a journey that I had with an Iroquois chief and all that we learned and all that uh, I understood about the importance of the great law and how it even applies today. So those are a few of the stories that I chronicle in the book. Kim, I know you've shared a couple personal stories in the book. Could you just tell a little bit about that? Sure. I talk about motherhood. I became a mother when I was older and loved the opportunity to have our son and to raise him. We wanted a second child and I wasn't able, so we adopted a girl when she was 12. And I chronicle that experience of adopting an older child and as well as raising a biological child. I also write about my spiritual journey, which is foundational to me. I talk about how important it is to be interconnected. And I use the word Ubuntu, one of my favorite African words, which is I am me because you are you. And I end the book with a chapter on lessons learned. Lessons such as how do we transform personal challenge, struggle, or frustration with an unjust system into constructive action so that we don't stay as victim or go into revenge, but we use it as an opportunity to both empower ourselves as well as do good in our communities. So I write about a number of those lessons. So I hope that my book, Beyond Borders, One Woman's Journey of Courage, Passion, and Inspiration will inspire you to write your story. And now that leads us to our next segment, which is part of your ongoing series, Inspirational Life Stories. I know, Bill, and this one's very special to me. Hi, Brenda Lynn Martin with Positive Spin TV, and I'm here to introduce a new segment of Inspirational Life Stories. On today's show, we present the story of Michelle Holliday, a young woman who has had to overcome seemingly unsurmountable obstacles in her life. To most people, the desert is an oasis, a place to relax and regenerate from the stressful life in the cities. It's a place to retire and enjoy life in a peaceful and healthy environment. But for some people, the desert is anything but an oasis. The heat and the discomfort it brings can be brutal to the unfortunate people who have to live on the street. What dire circumstances drove a successful wrestler, sports cover girl, and model to leave the limelight for the hardships of living in the desert? Positive Spin is giving focus to Michelle's story 
and its ongoing commitment to presenting inspirational life stories. Hi, Miss Cheryl. I can't wait to tell the world about your story. Tell us how you came to the desert. I came here um, for medical care. For which? I have brain lesions and I'm trying to get medical care for it because I have migraines. I also am supposed to be on meds and I don't take the meds because they do hurt your body. So I chose not to take my meds. And tell them a little bit about the brain lesions. The brain lesions, I've had them since I was young. I had a neurologist in Indianapolis tell my mother and me that um, there's nothing that they could do for them. There's no operation or anything. So you just live with the migraines and the yes. headaches. Yes. But being on the medicine that you were on for 15 years, it caused damage to your liver. And you I'm bipolar, schizophrenic, schizophrenia. I have ADD, ADHD, and all the medications that I was on, they controlled them, but not enough. So I decided to stop taking my meds, and I smoke marijuana, and it actually controls it. And it helps what made me. you leave the and wrestling arena? I got injured. What happened exactly? Um, a very risky move. I injured my back, and I had to retire. And that's how you became disabled? Yes. At what age was that? That was when I was in my teens. Wow. So you've been disabled for a while? Yes. Is that permanent? Yes. Wow. So tell us what lessons you've learned being out there. That it's not easy being out there. I mean, people think, you know, just because you're homeless that you don't have self-respect for yourself. You don't have respect for yourself. You don't. You know, you put yourself there. You know, you didn't put yourself there. This could happen to anybody. This could happen to anybody. To anybody. And that's what people don't understand. It can happen. It happened to me. And that was the hardest thing in my life, is to become homeless. Because when you're being judged every day, people don't realize how hard it is to sit there and say, excuse me, I, 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 do you have a dollar? Do you have spare change? That's hard for somebody to ask. Just to survive, to get something to Just drink Just to get or something eat. to eat or drink. And the, re you know, the restaurants now, they're locking the bathrooms because of the drug addicts going in there and doing what they're doing in the bathrooms. So they're locking the bathrooms now in the restaurants. So you have to go up there and purchase something to go to the restroom in a restaurant to where you've got good people that are in my situation like, like, like me. I've met many people that are good people that are homeless like me that get discriminated just like I did because the restaurant owners think that I'm going to go in there and do something that I'm not doing. And that's why I've been judged that a lot. Because I don't do drugs. I, I choose to walk away from that. I choose to not put myself in that situation. Because I was around it every day. And when you're around it every day, you tend, you want to walk away from it. Living on the streets is, is very scary, very hard. But when you found me, I mean, I was glad because I was at my wit's end. I was ready. I couldn't do it no more. I was tired. I was ready to live peaceful again, to be away from all the men and, and the prejudice. And I got fired from a very good job because I'm gay. That's one of the main reasons I was fired. And it, I'm not mad now. I was when I did get fired, but I'm not now. I'm not mad. I mean, I get judged every day. and. People judged me because they thought that I was a heroin addict, and I'm not. You've never done drugs? No, never. Just the marijuana for the brain lesions? Yes. How long were you in the streets? Two months. And where did you stay? Um, in tents, in fields, 
of buying houses, abandoned houses, things like that. Did anyone ever approach you and try to hurt you? Yes, several times. Yes. Because of the drugs that were involved. Yes. What was the main drug involved on the streets? There's two of them. There's uh, heroin and meth. One's called white and one's called black. And how did they do that? They shoot themselves up with syringes. And you were next to that every day? Every day, yes. Every day, yes. Mm. Every day. Must be very difficult. It was. This is our but little I mean, Wendy, your new service dog. Tell everybody how she became a part of your life and where you guys are at today. I got her from a homeless lady at Stater Brothers. When I got her, she was very tiny. And I've had her ever since she was five weeks old. She's my world. She's my everything. And I've had people tell me, well, why don't you give her up and get off the streets? No. This is my baby. This, She's my everything. She means everything to me. She's a great dog. She's very smart. She's me. And everybody wanted me to give her up and go to a shelter, but I fought to keep her with me, and I told Brenda, and I told everybody, I would rather be on the streets than give up my baby. I would rather be homeless than give her up, because she's my support. So they both have good lives now. Michelle's life demonstrates how a person can rise above discrimination and judgment to create a better life for herself. In the following segment, we visit the 2016 Comic-Con Convention in Palm Springs, California, where Positive Spin's hosts ask many of the young people dressed as their favorite superheroes for their personal messages of peace for the world. The messages were as varied as the costume characters they portrayed. Donatello, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle here, and I gotta tell you, life is short, and there is no reason to spend this short life fighting. Give peace a chance, that's the way to go. Hi, my name is Lincoln A. Castellanos, and I play Tobias on AMC's Fear the Walking Dead. What does peace mean to me? Peace to me means being able to look your fellow human being, your friend in the eyes and saying, I don't hold anything against you. I have no ill will wished upon you or anyone that you know. I only want the best for you and your friends and my friends and my family and everyone in this world because everyone deserves a chance to make not only their dreams come true, but to make the world a better place because of our dreams. The, the bigger we dream, the more positive we are on a day-to-day -day basis, the more that positive energy translates and pours out into everything that we do surrounding us. So I feel that peace should always be uh, at the top of our list. When we wake up every day, we be thankful to whoever it is that you believe in. For me, I'm thankful for the life that I have, thankful uh, that I have all the blessings with my family and friends, and I'm thankful that I feel peace. And I only want everyone else to feel peace. However they feel it, I want them to embrace it. 
peace. Nowadays, it's actually kind of, kind of a strange word in this in this world. It's uh, more chaotic, and it's just getting more and more chaotic. Um, but peace, working together, you know, as one, and trying to work out each other's issues and problems in a peace in a in a calmer manner instead of using you know harsh words or you know or lying. You know, we're we're focusing. People are more focused on their on their government and their leaders to try to solve their issues where it's actually the people that are the ones that make a difference. And, you know, if we start allowing other people to try to solve our issues for us, it's never going to get fixed unless we all unite together and actually come to an agreement and say, hey, look, this is the problem and we all need to work together to fix this, especially in our country. You know, we're looking to our government to try to fix our issues when it's the people that need to really get their acts straight and get away from this political correctness and actually focus on what the problems are and voting and actually putting your word in to try to change what's going on because they're not going to change unless we do something about it. We the people. And that's what I, I believe. Peace means letting the world be, experiencing the world and letting other people decide for themselves what it means to rule their lives. That's what peace means. That is what my father Odin believed in for humanity. Mortals, please listen to me. Peace, peace is achievable in your lifetime. I believe in you, thank you. All right, I'm the Green Power Ranger. Uh, peace means to me a world where everybody can walk down the street and feel safe, where you can go outside and enjoy your daytime without worrying about getting hurt and have food to eat and a good place to live. Uh, peace, I definitely uh, think uh, if we just uh, kind of, you know, just be good to one another, and uh, that goes a long way. Just treat each other with respect and kindness, uh, and if it just becomes a, you know, kind of a an infectious thing that happens where it becomes a chain and it just everyone gets along, and I think that, uh, you know, it's a good piece of chains. Uh, to me, peace means loving one another as Christ loved us. Um, and accepting one another and loving each other for who we were created to be. Um, and that's what peace means to me. Hey, this is your man Vincent in War, a.k.a. Oscar from the number one show called The Walking Dead. And we all need peace in the world. Not only do we need peace, we need respect, we need communication, and we need love. That's what's going to make us have a better world. Peace. We out. Like I say, as, as everybody learns, learns to respect differences, I appreciate what everybody has to offer, but we all different. It's the only time we ever have peace. As long as we all think one's right, one's wrong, you'll never what have peace it. Peace means to me is, uh, I believe it's like letting everybody um, do what they want, as long as it's it's legal and moral. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Like, uh, as long as no one's getting hurt or no one's getting made fun of or anything like that, everyone can have a good time. Uh, I believe uh, we need peace in the world. Uh, it's, it's one of the most crucial things we could do or need to do in our, in our society. I think that's the next step. That's what's needed. Um, we have a lot of hate and anger with even the current politics. There's a lot of hate and anger. There's no need for it. It's just opinions. All we need is peace and love. That's it. I think peace means like you like nobody. There's like no more wars and nobody's fighting it. Everything's calm. You don't have to like run in rage. That's I, I think peace means. I feel that peace is important because it helps bring relaxation to everyone. People are too stressed. People are always fighting. And peace is just important. Peace means to me that everybody respects everybody's other everyone else's decision to be who they want to be and to follow their dreams for freedom for anything that they what want. What peace means to me? Okay, now, peace me, to me means it's the key to the door that the only way we're all going to make it out of here alive and what peace is that if we have peace. You know, that's a tough one because um, I th there's so much anger in the world right now and I think peace to me would be just having everybody getting along. Um, I'm more of a love and light kind of guy. So, um, yeah, that's a tough question, what peace means to me, because um, there's so much anger and hatred right now, and I think that, you know, we're only on this planet for a limited time, and so 
I guess my philosophy still is, again, love and light. We all should just get along and be kind to each other with even just a simple hello to the mailman or just someone passing you by on the street. So, okay, that's it. Like, well, what peace means to me is that, like, like the world needs to stop fighting, stop racism, stop everything, and, like, just understand that we just all human beings just trying to live, just trying to live a normal life, and that's all. That's why we just need to end all this racism and race labeling, labeling people each class or skin color, everything. And that's what peace means to me. Hey, I'm uh, Brandon. I'm here at Palm Springs Comic Con. And, uh, you know, when asked what peace means to me, um, you know, just everyone getting along and uh, everyone loving each other and embracing themselves and other people. Captain America stands for liberty and peace and justice for all. Yes. Um, no fight. No, like... A fire or anything because everybody's so nice. You know? And everyone being nice to one another. Everyone getting along, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, from Jakku, and I think there should be peace in the galaxy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Princess Leia. Happy International Peace Day. So Brenda, I can't tell you how inspiring it was. I've never been to Comic-Con, and I'm around all of these young people who are so passionate about peace and the environment and all of these issues. I know, Bill. I think the next generation is gonna change the world. Let's hope so. Well, that's our show for today. We hope this program has inspired you to take action in your local community to create a better world. I'm Bill McCarthy. And I'm Brenda Lynn Martin. And we want to remind you that everyone can make a difference. Go out and make some positive, positive news. news.